Hey everyone, in today's Photoshop video, I want to show you how to fix a blurry image. I'm going to show you multiple different ways and you could apply all of them or just a few and see if that fixes your issue. Now, if your image is completely blurry, so you missed the focus entirely, there's not that much you could do. It's really, you have to retake the picture, but try what I'm going to show you in this video and hopefully that does help. So that is based on if you took a photo using a professional camera or your phone, and you missed the focus. If it's motion blur, meaning the subject move or your shutter speed was set to the wrong number, that is also really hard to fix, but you could apply some of these methods as well. And I have an image open here that is significantly out of focus. So if I zoom in here, you could see the focus was completely missed and the focus, the autofocus grabbed on the hair instead of the eyeball here, which is where the autofocus should have been. So this kind of image is very, very difficult to fix. I'm going to show you everything that is possible here to fix it. As usual, I have a link to Photoshop, the latest version in the description, depending on when you're watching this and a full course on Photoshop for beginners on Udemy. So you could check that out. Okay. So the image is open here on Photoshop. So that was the very first step. Now I'm going to come up here to layer, and I'm going to come down here to smart object and convert this to smart object. That's always step one for me. So it's a non-destructive edit at this point. Let's go ahead and apply one filter that is going to help with our focus. Come up to filter and then go down here to sharpen. And we want to apply something called smart sharpen. So step two is apply smart sharpen and follow this step right here. Take the amount all the way up and then reduce the radius all the way down. And then we'll start from here. So this is not doing anything yet because our radius is down. And as you increase the radius, look at your image and don't worry about the noise, the noise, all this grainy stuff. We're going to fix that. But basically, if we go all the way up with this, with the radius, you get something that looks like this that is not really fixable. And if you're at zero, nothing's happening. So typically, depending on your image, somewhere in between, you could look at the eyes here. Things are starting to come in a little better. So I'll bring it up. That's getting too much. It's kind of falling apart. So usually right in the center, I get the best results. Then we need to get rid of the noise and that has a noise reduction right here. So somewhere in the middle there too, is going to get rid of some of that noise for us, some of that graininess. Okay. It's not going to be perfect. And the more you go with this, the more cartoony is going to get. So somewhere in between and lens blur is what I'm going with. Motion blur is if I miss the motion Gaussian blur is if that was applied in the edit. So in this case, it was missed because of the focus point of the camera. So that's right for me and I'll press okay for now. Now this is obviously not the only step we're going to take but this is probably going to get us a little bit closer. So I just duplicated this to show you. So, so far, this is where we started and this is where we're at. You could see some of the details are coming in, but it still looks really bad. So let's keep going with this. The nice thing is with the smart object and with the smart filter, we have this filter right here that we could actually paint on. Okay. So go ahead and select this and then you want to go ahead and go up here to image adjustment. And then you're going to want to invert this. Just make sure the smart object is selected. There's a keyboard shortcut too. If you prefer that, press that. Basically that should turn this white into black. Now we could paint on this. This is a mask that we could paint on. So I'm going to go ahead and choose my brush right here. Click on brush and then let's click on this drop down and select our brush. Typically one of these right here with the soft, round is going to be good. And then the brush size here, 150 for my image. You can see how big it is over here. It's actually a little bit too big. I'll reduce it to about a hundred. That's about good. That's about the size of the eyeballs here. Then I'm going to change the flow here. I'm going to just reduce the flow to 25. Okay. Now this depends. You have to do a little bit of trial and error and if I click and drag here, as long as this smart object filter is selected and nothing is happening because we need the foreground to be the opposite color of this background with the smart filter. So if this is black, this needs to be white. 
So if I just press this, white comes in the foreground and this is black, okay? So make sure you do the same thing and then drag and you see what happened? Let me just undo that. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see a little bit better. Drag, you see how things are coming into focus? So this is before and as I drag right here, things are getting into focus. It's basically just bringing the details of what I sharpened. So I'm going to do the teeth, maybe the tip of the nose, a little bit on the cheek, but definitely the eyeballs, okay? And same thing, a little bit of the forehead. I don't want to bring in the hair though. I want her face to pop and we're not going to focus on this. So drag that a little bit. Now, as you slowly zoom out, it's going to look a lot better because you're only bringing to attention a small parts of our face that need to be in focus. Here's before, and here's after. You see that? You can see the eyeballs, the teeth. And this is significantly missed the focus here. The focus is set to her arms and her hair, nowhere near her eyes, but this is really helping. Use the brush, continue to paint on the details here, and you could always revert if you switch this to black, it will take away from what you just did. So if you wanna go backwards, that's how you do it. Wanna go forward, flip that back, and paint and bring things into focus on a face or whatever subject you're selecting. Okay, so let me show you one more step here. This is just our layer that we're not using right now. I just have it as a demo so we could go back to the original. But our top layer, the one we just painted on, we're gonna duplicate this too. So Control J or Command J on a Mac. That will duplicate it. So now we have two of this layer with the same smart filter and everything that we had before. And with this top one selected now, I'm going to come over here to Filter. I'm going to go down to Other and I'm gonna do a High Pass Filter. Okay, and you're gonna get this weird kind of effect here. So let me show you what this is doing. If you go all the way up with it, it's not gonna be what you're looking for. But if you go to zero, it's not gonna fix anything either. So if you increase this radius slightly till you start getting some lines over here, this is where you wanna be. So typically start from zero, slowly come up till you get these lines over here. Don't worry about the gray, we'll fix that in a second. So press okay, and now, with this top layer selected, we need to blend this with the picture behind it. So go to normal, click this, and these are your blend modes, and go to overlay or hard light or soft light. Any one of these should do the job. So I'll go to overlay, okay? And then we'll go ahead and reduce the opacity if it looks too significant, if you see any gray on her face, which I'm seeing a little bit. Reduce the opacity, okay? Halfway. Now let's see, this is after, before, after. So it's helping, it's creating some contrast, it's making our face pop. And if I go to the original, if I turn everything off and go to the original and then turn this on, you see her eyes are coming in, and then turn this on, it's gonna really help the image. You could continue to even blur the rest of the picture. Sometimes you just wanna isolate the face that you brought into focus and actually make everything else fall out of the focus with another filter. Okay, so if you do that, then you're kind of basically tricking the eyes to go and think this is in focus, although this wasn't in focus and this was, but if you blur the rest of the image, you could kind of give it that effect. You could also darken the image, use a vignette here to bring your attention to what you fixed here, so the rest actually looks dark and out of focus rather than the area that actually was out of focus. And make sure you save your image in the highest resolution possible when you go ahead and export it out of Photoshop so you retain all that stuff that you just did to improve your image. And this is really the best way to help you fix your image that is blurry. Unfortunately, I wish there was a better way, but when the camera doesn't capture that detail and it's out of focus, the computer is just really trying its best to cheat and really create things that are not there. And this is the best result you're gonna get. But I hope you found it useful. Please give it a thumbs up, subscribe for easy to follow creative videos just like this one, and I'll see you next time.